So this is working. Good. Okay. So I'm going to start from the beginning. So I have taken my bubble, Im uh, bubble image, which is inherently noisy, and I'm going to run the TGV denoise over it. And um, I'm going to use John Rister's method, and I'm going to explain how it works. So if you have a color image, you can extract the luminance um, from the image and use that as a mask. I don't have to explain it, I suppose. If you're working with monochrome, you can just duplicate the image. And then what I'm doing is I'm auto-stretching this. Like I open the screen transfer function here. And uh, I auto-stretch the image. And then I take this and push it over here. And then I apply it to that image. And then I have stretched it. So. This is a stretched image now, and I can use it as a, I'm, I'm a mask. Okay, so you have a luminance, that's great. Anyhow, so this is my gonna be my, lum, my TGV luminance mask, um, or rather TGV uh, luminance. So what I'm going to do now is create a mask out of this. So this is my luminance mask. And for this, I'll open up the uh, curse transformation. And I select the RGBK or whatever and open up a preview of uh, that image so I can see what's happening here. And I want it to look something like this. So low contrast image. This is what I want. And I can close the preview. Apply this. So this is a low contrast image now. And from here, I'm going to take the luminance mask and I'm going to take and shift the midpoint to the middle, like this. So it's stretched further. And then I'm going to take mask and apply the luminance mask that I just created and invert it. I hide it, and that's all cool and good so far. So then I will create a few previews of low signal to noise ratio portion and high signal to noise ratio portion. And one preview of pure background. So where there's nothing else but just noise. So let's see if I can find something like that. And I suppose this is a uh, as good as any, it doesn't have to be big. The next thing I'm gonna do is I open up statistics and select that last preview I created, which has just background in it. And I select normalized real. And I'm looking for the standard deviation and it doesn't show normally, you have to go to statistics, statistics options and enable standard deviation and probably also save it. So I got this far. So I didn't do any denoising so far, of course. So I'm going to start TGB denoise. I'm running it in CAA LAB mode, and I don't apply it to prominence. So uh, local support, I will select the luminance that I created that is just stretched. This is my luminance, so I'm going to use this. I keep all the settings by, uh, as default. And now there are some parameters here. And the most important parameter is like edge protection. And for this, I have found this method. So statistics, the standard deviation of pure background is like 1.663940, uh, whatever. So I'm going to enter here 1.66 and at zero uh, E. Uh, zero four, so like this is like minus four. And the other parameters, I typically do something like two strength, eight smoothness, and minus one exponent. This works for my data typically. It doesn't have to work for all data. You have to experiment with strength. You have to experiment with smoothness, and so on. And for iterations, I leave it at one hundred for testing purposes. So I'm going to go on that preview and just apply this for now. 
And ta-da, you have a very smoothened uh, background, which has some large particle noise, like large blotchy noise, but that is fine. We can work around that. Generally, if you get a result that is similar to this, this is already good. And I can push the iterations to something like 750, which is typically what I'm running for uh, a proper denoise pass. The more iterations, the better the end result will be. So I'm looking at this and it's running. And so 750, this is looking very good. I can work with that. It keeps the small scale noise. It removes the very black weird stuff here and seems to preserve the detail quite well. And I'm going to test it out just because I can and rather because I have, I need to, I'm going to test it out on uh, the preview of the highest signal to noise uh, area as well. Okay, as you can see, it got very smooth. It didn't lose any significant detail, I can tell. Uh, by the way, to quickly change between uh, the application and the original, you can press Control, Shift, and Z. And that switches uh, back and forth. And you can see it, it looks pretty good. I mean, it's what you would want from a denoising pass. This is good. This is also pretty good. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to run it over that whole image for now. This, of course, also works with chrominance noise, but it's not that effective. Uh, for chrominance noise, you would uh, do basically the same. You take the RGB image, take a preview of the background, go into statistics, find uh, the around average between all three channels and you use uh, of standard deviation, and you use that for edge protection. So this is my denoised result. This is the first step of applying PGB denoise. So if I compare it directly, you see immediately it looks a lot smoother and the details are still well preserved. So the next step is um, a multi-scale median transform. And I have set up and saved me some uh, icons that I can use because this is pretty annoying to enter every time I will uh, show the settings properly what to do, but for multi-scale median transform, we need a new um, we need a new mask, and for that we take the TGB dominance mask that we created, duplicate it, and name it I don't know MMT luminance mask, and the luminance mask for MMT has to be. Like here, um, this is uh, how it look, looks right now. What you're gonna do is increase the low range to like minus 0 0.5. And then you push that histogram until it looks something like this, or rather the, um, the spike is around 80% or something. And then you just apply it. And that will create a very bright mask. And this is exactly what you want. So I'm going to remove that mask, select the new one, take the MMT, invert it. And as you see, it protects everything quite well. And the MMT is, I'm applying it to luminance, but the step can also be applied to chrominance. And this is like a very, very strong MMT. It's like super strong multi-scale median, median transform here, uh, very high parameter, strength of one, and so on and so on. You can also play with adaptive, but that's just taking fucking ages to run. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that and apply it to my previews. 
And that should take care of the dark blotches in the background. It's very subtle to see, but it really takes care of them pretty well. And I can do the same on my uh, my high signal to noise ratio uh, area to see if this destroys any detail. And it doesn't look that way. It kind of flattens the background a bit and smoothens out everything and makes these weird darker blotches go away and blend more into the image. And for that, I will just uh, take it and apply it to everything. And that's about it. That's most of my denoising that I'm doing for all of my images. And uh, I can move it to workspace four here and duplicate it and revert to show a direct comparison of uh, both images. So I'm gonna scroll it down and scroll something up here. So and this is one TGV denoise pass in essence. And yeah, if you ever do that, don't press Control A. Like, don't stretch it again. You will fuck things up completely. If you stretch this, now it will look horrible. But it shouldn't, uh, like, uh, because because it's like it's it will be blotchy and ugly, and you uh, I can show you it's like this, and you will see all these ugly blotches in the background, and you typically don't need a strong histogram, uh, like um, you don't need another auto stretch. Once you have one auto stretch from your initial data, you go and work with that, and this is approximately what you would want to have in the end anyway, because from here you can just go and open histogram transformation, remove the mask, and then do something like, I don't know, here, you can stretch the shit out of this. And this is kind of weird because it's kind of, uh, you can stretch it a fair bit and zero in and zero in and then Stretch it some more, and that's looking pretty okay. Sure, it still has a bit of noise, but this is something that you really actually kind of want. You can now run different denoising processes like ACDNR or multiscale linear transform if you want an even smoother result than what we got here. But generally, um, this is what you are kind of looking for when denoising an image. So yeah, that's basically everything to say about TGB denoise. This takes a while to get good results with it, but it's absolutely worth uh, to work with that. All right, that's about it.